Would you wear a computer on your head in public? What if it made you more productive? Today on Tech First with John Goods here, we're chatting with Alex Castillo of Neurosity, which just released The Crown. It's a brain sensing computer that you wear kind of like a hat, which one day may be a hat or could be inserted under your skull. Tell me about The Crown. What is it? The Crown is a brain-computer interface. We actually call it a brain-computer because it's the first device that images the brain, has a full computing module, and also has internet connection. But it's basically a wearable device that you put it on the top of your head, right? You place it, and then it is able to quantify your focus and sustain attention for people who are interested in managing their productivity. Very cool. It's not just one halo. It looks like two halos there. Um, very cool. How does it sense your brain? What's the technology involved there and how sensitive is it? Yeah, it sends uh, the brain via technology called EEG. EEG is a technology that has existed almost for 100 years. It's very commonly used in hospitals to detect, you know, to see the impact of concussions or seeing about seizures. Um, but what we've done is that we've used the state of the art machine learning and hardware that we have today. We have combined it into a single device that can not only capture this information in real time, but it's always it's also able to create all the metrics in real time to tell you about your mind state, whether you're focused or you're calm or relaxed. And when you're not focused, you're not working well, you're not very productive, you're not achieving a lot. This is going to help you get focused is what you're saying. How does it do that? Yeah, so we mostly look at oscillations in the gamma brainwaves. These are the same brainwaves that, you know, the past few decades of research have correlated with sustained attention. So we're constantly measure that. Keep in mind, we're imaging the brain, you know, hundreds of times per second. We are getting thousands of data points and we're able with very accuracy uh, and high sensitivity able to predict exactly what your focus for is at a given time. And then based on that, you can imagine how you will be able to change your computing experience, whether it is uh, disable notifications when you're in the zone. Uh, we've learned that it can take up to 20 minutes to go back into the zone if you're distracted because of notifications. And we're also able to use music to passively write into the brain because music has that power of changing people's moods and energies, right? So we are able to make music recommendations because we can see how your neurons are reacting to the song in real time. Super interesting. Is it a medical device? Do you need any kind of medical clearance? It's not a medical device. It uses medical and research grade technology uh, and it's packaged and created for consumers. Interesting. Now, you've probably done some research on this. You probably use it yourself. Uh, how great is the productivity increase? Yeah, so what we're aiming is to increase a 3% output just as starters, right? Um, I am neurotypical. My co-founder, AJ Keller, he's, uh, he has HGHD. Uh, for him, it's more of a necessity, right? And for me, it's like, okay, I really don't have any time to waste and I need to accomplish this task. And I'm able to see in real time exactly how the data changes based on every single thing that I'm doing. And we've learned to know exactly when to take breaks uh, and when not to do if we want to sustain attention. Did you say 30% increase in productivity? Three. 3%. Yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, do you see that going, growing over time? Right now you're mostly, um, I guess, finding out, hey, notifications are distracting you, turn them off, you're playing music. Are there other things that you'll do in the future that will help people get in the zone and enter a state of flow? Yeah, so one of the exciting things I'm working on right now is personalized insights. So as opposed to looking into the one third of the bias signature that humans share, we're looking exactly at how that person's brainwaves react while they work. So the output, of course, should grow over time and the and you can see you should be able to see compound interest when it comes to productivity. But it's it's a little bit more than just like telling you to turn in notifications, for example. Uh, we have software that turns off the notifications while you're in the zone, but while you pass a specific threshold for you, and once you come down, you get the notification. So 
we're making this world when we're automating like selecting music and what music to play. You don't have to like a song anymore. You don't have to create playlists. You don't have to reorder. All of those tasks that takes your hands for you to work some piece of software are going to start being automated and your subconscious is going to take over your brain. Is going to be able to make those decisions for you in the background. That's per some pretty sophisticated engineering because I may really like a song and like I want to turn it up. I want to listen to that louder. And that's not good for my state of productivity and flow because I'm going to get out of what I'm doing and into the song. So you've got to find some level of music that is at some level pleasing. I want to hear it, but also something that doesn't distract. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. But when you say I or me, right, um, you're referring to your brain as well at the same time. So right now, our neurotic shift application is optimized to select songs to increase your productivity. So it looks into a songs like what is the acousticness? What is the speechiness? What is the, the valence? Uh, what is the danceability and energy? And we find the perfect ratio for all of those uh, features to drive the next song recommendation. Interesting. I suppose over time you could switch that up and say, hey, now you don't want productivity. Now you want something else, a different type of feeling or a different type of experience. And we'll switch the music for that. Is that correct? Yes, that's very correct. Uh, in the near future, it will be very easy to say, optimize music recommendations for relaxation, optimize them to make me feel a specific emotion as we start to quantify emotions as well. Like I want to feel more upbeat right now. Right. <laughs> so we'll be able to start using music as a mechanism to tune your mood. Uh, and we're starting to see some progress when it comes to that already. You're also building a software platform with an API that other companies can plug into. Drowsy is one of them, and you're working on Insomnia there. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. So for us to be able to write applications for ourselves, for our own product, we had to build a platform and, a, and an API that allows us to tap into this data and be able to plug it into our app layer. So what we did is that we opened that up uh, to all developers interested and we are already seeing people using it to control their own video games and companies like Drowsy that are using it to treat insomnia. Basically what they do is that they do trainings during the day to promote the data, uh, the, the Delta brainwaves, which are the brainwaves that you see increase during night. So at night, it's just like working out, right? At night, you start seeing more Delta brainwaves, which decrease the symptoms of insomnia. In the same way, uh, we're also working with other companies that are using uh, psychedelic therapy as well. So we're gonna see a lot of people building up uh, neural applications that anyone who already has a device or the Dalgata device to use our productivity app will be able to download an app. Okay, I want this app for sleep. I want this app for stress. I want this app for, you know, emotion and communication and for entertainment or smart home. Wow. What do you see as, I don't want to say end game. There's no end game. The, the world keeps spinning. Technology keeps getting better. But if you cast your gaze out five, 10 years, what do you see this device being capable of? And what do you see this platform uh, achieving for people? I think we're going to see similar impact, same as the smartphone, uh, what the smartphone did for everyone. We're starting going to see the operating system be migrated from uh, as, as a small device to the brain, to the operating system of the brain, an operating system that knows you and can make uh, decisions for you and help you make decisions, right? Um, we're already learning more about uh, EEG data. Like in the last few years, they've been able to even predict like epilepsy decisions before, up to one hour before they happen and able to diagnose the spectrum. So this technology that has been around for almost 100 years, in the last 2% of that time, we've learned exponentially way more than what we knew about it. So what you're going to see is that the computing platform is going to become the computing platform of the mind, of, of the brain. You will be able to, even things that are going to sound as crazy as being able to download memories and be able to replay dreams and things like that. They look and they sound very like, Black Mirror-ish, but where we're starting seeing technology that can image the brain and can do some of these things. Like there's already research backing up some of these things up. So for the five to, next five to 10 years, uh, it's gonna be crazy, but I think it's gonna be super exciting to see what humans can do once they're able to use their brain for more than what they're using it today because of the limitation of their bodies. 
I think it will be a crazy, amazing, wonderful, scary future, because if I'm not mistaken, I've seen research on transferring memories from brain to brain and helping people understand what somebody else is thinking about. I mean, some level of almost technologically enhanced uh, telepathy, other things like that, merging consciousness in some level. I mean, we get into metaphysics really, really quickly, uh, which which probably strays for a lot from the science and the hardware and the engineering, but the possibilities are really interesting. What is really interesting as well to me is that this is a device that goes on my head. I don't have to drill a hole. Exactly. <laughs> I'm thinking of Elon Musk. I'm thinking of Neuralink. Uh, right. Do you think you'll get there at some point? Well, the the great thing about you know Neuralink is that they're tackling the bandwidth problem, right? Um, and that's where they want to get in there because they want to have more sensors to be able to capture more neurons and actually like the, the spikes of the neuron. I think what's going to happen is that at some point, these technologies might converge, right? So we are using software in a way to compensate for the lack of bandwidth and sensor that we have today. But we started adding value today. Like this is not like, okay, we're working and eventually down the line, we're going to be able to do this. We're already proven. Uh, you know how this technology can impact your life today and the first problem that we're tackling is focus and attention and we're already doing that and our users are using it uh for several hours at a time while they work every day right uh, the first user to like hit like one million snatches of data uh that, that just happened like uh, a, a few weeks ago um but when it comes to invasive and non-invasive we need to keep pushing forward uh and we need to come up with ways where this technology can touch one billion lives right uh, most likely that would happen uh, with non-invasive. And for hardware upgrades, it's definitely great to be able to just switch it, the hardware just the same way you switch your phone. We've been shrinking the device significantly since our first prototype. If you see our first prototype and you see our device today, like it's, it's a huge difference, right? Um, and we were able to pack a whole computer of like a quad core 1.8 gigahertz uh, CPU um, and that's not going to stop now. So when it comes to these different methodologies, I think we're going to see amazing things happen in the next several years. Super, super interesting. Bringing brain augmentation technology to a billion people. Uh, I can envision uh, uh, multiple modalities here. Uh, on, on the head, uh, some level of invasive, some level of, of, of direct interface, other things like that. Also, just a baseball cap. <laughs> Something that hides all the hardware in what just looks like a baseball cap or a bowler hat or something yeah. like that. I assume you're thinking along the same lines. We're gonna make this technology so it's invisible to you. So form factor won't really matter. Like we need to keep pushing the boundaries on how we image the brain uh, while being able still to make sense of that data and have hardware that is powerful enough uh, to be able to make these um, decisions, right? Like it's a whole operating system that we're packing. Yes. What we've done at Neurosity is the same thing that happened uh, before the smartphone and after the smartphone. Um, you know, when the smartphone came out, uh, operating system, application store, you are able to do way more than just make phone calls and text, right? So that's what we're ready to see. And that's why Drowsy and companies like that have been able to build applications for that neuro app store that's going to be coming out soon. Wonderful. Alex, thank you so much for taking this time. Thank you so much, John, for having me. It's been a pleasure.